Good afternoon, everyone. Today I am presenting the seminar on the topic Decent Advances in Depression, and my moderator is Dr. Sindhan. In this, we will be studying about a basic introduction, the advances in the classification, genetics, the molecular studies, neurobiology, and neuroimaging, and the recent advances in the treatment. So depression, it is the most prevalent mood disorder, heterogeneous illness, in which up to 60% of the patients may experience some degree of treatment resistance that prolongs and worsens the episode. Major depressive disorder has a 12-month prevalence of 6.6% and a lifetime prevalence of 16.2% and is twice as common in women as in men and causes considerable impairment. Age of onset distribution suggests that depression is prevalent for the entire lifespan. The disorder not only produces decrements in health that is equivalent to those of other chronic diseases like angina, arthritis, diabetes, but also worsens mean health scores substantially, more when comorbid with these diseases than alone. The advances in the classification. In DSM-5, uh, disruptive mood dysregulation disorder and free menstrual dysphoric disorder has been included under depressive disorders. Dysthymia is now replaced by the term persistent depressive disorder and also includes the chronic form of depression. New specifier with mixed features, it has been also included. In DSM-4, there was an exclusion criteria for a major depressive episode that was applied to depressive symptoms lasting less than two months following the death, death of a loved one, that is the bereavement exclusion. This exclusion is omitted in DSM-5 and the with anxious distress has also been added. In ICD-11, a separate grouping of persistent mood disorders consisting of dysthymia and cyclothymia, it has been eliminated. For depressive episode, a minimal sim uh, symptom count is required. In the ICD-11 CDDG, that is uh, Clinical Descriptions and Diagnostic Guidelines, organize depressive symptoms into three clusters, the effective, cognitive, and neurovegetative. Fatigue is a part of neurovegetative symptom cluster, but is no longer considered sufficient as an entry-level symptom. Rather, either almost daily depressed mood or diminished interest in activities lasting at least two weeks is required. Hopelessness has been added as an additional cognitive symptom. The ICD-11 provides various qualifiers to describe the current mood episode or remission rate status in partial or in full remission. The diagnosis of mixed depressive and anxiety disorder has been moved from anxiety disorders in the ICD-10 to depressive disorders in the ICD-11. A melancholic features qualifier that bears a direct relationship with the concept of somatic syndrome in ICD-10 has been added. A qualifier to identify persistent episodes of more than two years duration has been added. A prominent anxiety symptoms qualifier has been added. The qualifier indicating the presence of panic attacks and a qualifier to identify the seasonal pattern has also been added. The advances in the genetics. In the genetic, uh, in the genetics, uh, depression has a polygenic, uh, polygenic inheritance. Interactions between genetic variants and ex environmental exposures; these both play a role. Major depressive disorder Bye. is Bye. associated. with polymorphism in the glucocorticoid receptor gene NR3C1, monoamine oxidase A gene, the gene for glycogen synthase kinase 3 beta, group 2 metabotropic glutamate receptor gene GRM3 gene, and serotonin transporter gene SLC6A4. The advances in the molecular studies 
genetic variants of peripheral hormone type factors associated with major depressive disorder. The first one is the other neurotropic factors and other growth factors, which include uh, brain-derived neurotropic factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, and insulin-like growth factor 1. Pro-inflammatory cytokines, which include interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, human necrosis factor alpha, and impaired regulation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenocortical HPA axis, it also plays a role. Uh, pharmacogenetics. It is the study of how genetic variation influences the response to treatment uh, to the drug treatments. It has been divided into efficacy pharmacogenetics and safety pharmacogenetics. The aim of pharmacogenetics is to discover genetic profiles that can be determined by simple genetic tests to predict how patients will respond to psychotropic treatments and to allow physicians to tailor medications to maximize the efficacy and the tolerability. So in this a meta-analysis, it showed two associations. Uh, there is a serotonin, the serotonin transporter link polymorphic region, that is HTT uh, LPR. It is a degenerate repeat polymorphic region that is present on SLC6A4, that is located on chromosome 17. And this gene, it encodes for the serotonin transporter. So meta-analysis, it showed two associations. Uh, there are two alleles of 5-HTT LPR. Uh, the long allele, it increased the response to SSRIs and reduced the side effects of the SSRIs. And the short allele, it increased the peroxetin-induced adverse effects and decreased the metazepine-induced adverse effects. The genome-wide association studies, the effectiveness of antidepressants can be predicted by genes from corticotrophin-releasing hormone receptor 1, uh, corticotrophin hormone binding protein, uranyl 2 uh, sulfotransferase, and interleukin 1. The predictors of the antidepressants response are genetic variations in FKBP5. It is a protein that regulates cortisol binding to the glucocorticoid receptor. Genetic variation in the COM gene and the predictors of antidepressant non-response is genetic variants in the TREK1. TREK1, it controls the cell excitability and maintains the membrane potential. It is present in brain and it is also present in heart and other uh, and smooth muscles also. Advances in neurobiology and neuroimaging. Neuroimaging studies of major depressive disorder have provided evidence for specific functional abnormalities in the neural system in adults. Studies suggest that abnormally increased amygdala, ventral striatal, and medial prefrontal cortex activity, mostly to the negative emotional stimuli, such as fearful faces. Abnormally reduced ventral striatal activity to positive emotional stimuli and during receipt and anticipation of rewards in adults and adolescents with depression. These findings support a bias of attention towards negative emotional stimuli and away from the positive emotional and reward-related stimuli in individuals with major depression. These functional neuroimaging studies, these are complemented by increased findings suggesting reductions in gray matter in key regions of these neural systems, including amygdala, age-related decrease in volume of the anterior cingulate cortex, and the postmortem findings indicating neural cell and glial cell pathology in the prefrontal cortical region. So the abnormalities in the neural connectivity or the circuits in major depressive disorder are effective connectivity. Activity in one region exerts effect over the another region of the brain. Second one is abnormal inverse effective connectivity. It is between the medial prefrontal cortex and amygdala. Abnormally increased top-down regulation of amygdala by the medial prefrontal cortex and bias away from the attendance to positive emotional stimuli. A meta-analysis identified two neural systems that are of importance in major depressive disorder. The first neural system, it is centered on the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and anterior cingulate cortex. Its reduced activity is in the resting state and activity returns to normal with the treatment. The second neural system, it is centered on medial prefrontal cortex and subcortical regions. It is hyperactive to emotional stimuli in the depressed state and it returns to normal after antidepressant treatment. Now the recent advances in the treatment. 
The recently approved drugs are Vilazodone. It was FDA approved in 2011. It is an SSRI plus 5 HD1 a partial agonist and the dose is 20 to 40 milligram per day. What your oxygen? The recommended dose is 5 to 20 milligram per day. Esketamine nasal sprays and uh, brexinolone IV injection for postpartum depression infused over 60 hours. Now optimizing the monoaminergic uh, mono modulation. Growing database implicating dopamine dysfunction in the pathophysiology of depression are present. Novel treatments in this category, it includes triple reuptake inhibitors. These inhibitors block synaptic reuptake of uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. These are tesofensine and cybutramine. Then there are dopamine agonists. Dopamine D2 and D3 receptor agonists. These include pramipexol and ropinirol. Atypical antipsychotic augmentation. These are the antidepressant effects via dopamine function modulation and 5-HT1A agonism. These are aripiprazole, risperidone, cutiapine, and olanzapine. Now, some of the novel pharmacological targets beyond the monoamines. First one is corticotropin releasing factor, CRF1 receptor antagonist. It leads to the inhibition of the glucocorticoid function. Decreased synthesis or receptor blockage of adrenal glucocorticoids may have antidepressant effects. Agents that interfere with cortisol synthesis are ketoconazole, amino glutamide, and metyrapone. Then second are glucocorticoid 2 receptor antagonist. It is mipiprostone. Third one is substance P, NK1 antagonist. Stress leads to elevated CSF substance P concentrations. Decreased serum levels are seen with an antidepressant response. Example, epipetant and GR205171. Then there are melatonin receptor agonist, which includes agomelatin, a melatonin receptor 1 and 2 agonist. Also, it uh, acts as 5-HT2C receptor. It is an antagonist and it also provides antidepressant effect. Then there are melanocyte inhibiting factor. It is a small peptide located in the CNS associated with acute antidepressant effects in an early study. Uh, nemipetide is a novel analog of melanocyte inhibiting factor administered by a subcutaneous injection. Then there are omega-3 fatty acid which include uh, ethyl eicosa pent uh, and uh, docosa hexonic acid. Now the recent advances in the uh, focal brain stimulation. First one is vagal nerve stimulation. It is FDA approved for long-term adjunctive treatment for recurrent or chronic depression, but uh, not responding to four or more medications. Then there is transcranial direct current stimulation. The lateral prefrontal cortex transcranial direct current stimulation demonstrated greater antidepressant efficacy compared to occipital TDCS and sham TDCS in a single double-blind randomized control trial. Repeated transcranial magnetic stimulation, high frequency RTMS over the left uh, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex at adequate doses for a minimum of 10 sessions has statistically significant antidepressant effects in treatment resistant depression. Then there is magnetic seizure therapy. MST involves using a RTMS device to create a generalized seizure. Antidepressant effects similar or equivalent to high dose right unilateral electroconvulsive therapy. Deep brain stimulation, it is produced by a subclavian subcutaneous pulse generator that connects to neurosurgically implanted electrodes that stimulate a focused region of the brain. The deep brain stimulation targets in depression are uh, subgenual cingulate white matter, the anterior limb of the internal capsule, the hebunula, nucleus ethiumens, and thalamic peduncle. Then there is epidural prefrontal cortical stimulation. Leads are placed through a burr hole in the skull above the dura matter. Four cortical stimulation paddle leads are stereotactically placed over anterior frontal poles and midlateral prefrontal cortex. So my references. Thank 
Es que todo es así. नहीं दिया जो डिप्रेशन के जो डिप्रेशन के पेशेंट्स थे उसमें देते थे ईसीटी में मैम देते ही हैं हम उसे हाँ वो मैम ईसीटी देने से पहले कंसल्टेंट पूछते भी है कि डिप्रेशन का तो पेशेंट है वो फिर तो कीटा में अब नहीं देते आज Yeah. 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 Yeah.